Hello and welcome to the very first devlog for this game that I've been working on for the past couple weeks. This game doesn't have a name yet, but hopefully we'll get that sorted out soon. I'll quickly talk about myself for a second. No, I don't have any game dev experience, but to be fair, I have taken one C-sharp course on Unity, so honestly, I'm feeling pretty invincible right now. Anyway, let's talk about the game. So for this next part, I'll use my notebook and also draw a bit on the screen just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I know it's going to look a little shit, but just bear with me. So I'm working on making a roguelike. My current idea is the player character will start outside of a mysterious forest and need to explore deeper into the forest as the run progresses. I'm thinking some levels might be inside the general forest area or inside caves or ruins. The game will have some NPCs that the character can interact with, some giving rewards and some with progressive dialogues that will expand the farther you make it in each run. And like any roguelike, you will find items while running through the levels, increasing the player's stats. I'm planning on having a variety of enemies for the player to encounter, depending on the room or the level that the player is currently in. As of right now, and even after this video goes out, this still probably doesn't have a name, so if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. You'll have to forgive me, some of these clips are from a couple of weeks ago, and I have the memory of an ant. Uh, so here I had started working on a brick wall for a cave dungeon tile set. Um, I'm using a sprite for all the pixel art in this game. This is also my first time making pixel art, so just bear with me. Uh, I think ultimately I decided to scrap this brick idea because it was looking a little weird when I brought it into Unity. I'll also show you what I have for the player and enemy sprites so far. So currently, this is what the player sprite looks like. I wanted something more interesting than just a naked person as the character sprite. And here we have the first enemy sprite that I've made so far. It's just a rat. As you can see, I've also made a simple idle and walking animation for the rat. Nothing too crazy. In some of the footage, I was messing around with the colors of these sprites, but I think these ones that I'm showing you right now in A sprite will be the final colors. And here I'm just testing the tile set in Unity. As you can see, I've changed the wall tiles again to a different style that uses an angled top-down perspective. However, I decided to not use both the wall and floor tiles from this test, but I kept the footage of them to show how I progress to what I'm currently using for the cave tile set. The next clip is one of the few times I actually remembered to record myself while I was working on the game. Okay, so I just recorded and, uh, what I was trying to get out of my mind. What, what am I saying? I was trying to collect my thoughts. And I tried to record it. I didn't even have the mic plugged in. I was just talking to nothing. Uh, I've been working on this tile set for probably an hour now, just like trying to make it look somewhat okay. Uh, not even including the time that I actually made it the day before, but uh, essentially what I've been trying to do, I'll pull up the Unity thing here, so you can actually see the room. Uh, the original version of this is is just like flat with a bit of shading, and I thought the sh I went too crazy with the shading and it looked really messy and weird, so I was like, okay, I'll add some like kind of like cracked brick into this, and I was trying to go for this like top-down angled like perspective view and I think I'm just over complicating this way too much but I thought about it for a little bit and I think I've had a breakthrough about how I'm gonna build this but if I go this route I'm going to have to redo uh, all of the wall tiles I, I'll keep the floor tile because it's just brown with like a little bit of shadow on the edges so I think that's fine, but I'm probably going to end up redoing the the wall tiles now. This is tough, you know. I've been, I I've, I'm learning I'm learning how to make the pixel art while also trying to make something that I consider usable, and I think that's slowing down the process a lot. But uh, hopefully, I'm on the right track right now. And here you can see I'm using a version of the new cave tile set. I'm happy with how this one turned out compared to how it looked before. But taking a step away from pixel art for now, in this clip I'm working on a script for how enemies should follow the player. However, I was having a lot of issues with this. 
For example, the enemies were either not following the player or getting stuck on walls or other obstacles, which is a big issue because later on I'm planning on having certain enemy types retreat from the player rather than following them. And if they end up always getting stuck on objects, it won't lead to an enjoyable gameplay experience. Later on, I also want to have a variety of enemy types, including some that retreat from the player when they get too close. Here I took a break from the enemy behavior script and implemented the universal render pipeline in order to add some lighting into my game. So far, I've only added a spotlight around the player to increase visibility. Here I'm just messing around with the player's animation states, but instead of talking to you about that, I'm going to talk to you about the other recent changes that I forgot to record. As you can see, everything looks slightly different compared to the previous clip, and this is because I added in some global lighting, making everything darker. I also added in some rock obstacles around the room. But the biggest change by far is that I scrapped the enemy behavior script that I was writing in favor for the A-star pathfinding script. Essentially, this script resolves all the problems I had with enemies getting stuck on obstacles or the walls around the room. The script scans the room for objects and paths the enemies around anything marked as an obstacle. You can download a free version of the A-Star Pathfinding script on the A-Star website. They also have a paid version of the script, I believe it's $100. Now we're getting into the part of the video where I actually remember to record things. Next, I decided to work on interactables, starting with a chest that the player can open. I always start with creating a sprite first. I don't know why I do this. I know it's probably not the best workflow, but it is what it is. I don't really have a method for making pixel art, I just look at a lot of reference images and take aspects that I like from them. Now I didn't end up recording it, but I did also make a spawning animation for the chest and an opening animation, which I think we'll see later on in a bit of the footage when we actually get the interactable script working. Yeah. I lied. I'll just show you now. I don't know why I'm being so lazy. I just open a spray. I can just show you the animations. So here's the opening animation for the chest. Uh, also, the chest looks a little bit different. I think I thickened up the bars here a little bit. Uh, so that's the opening animation. Pretty simple. Uh, and here's the spawning animation. It looks a little... I'm not 100% happy with this, but it's supposed to kind of like drop in. But because the I made the sprite 32 by 32 it's not really dropping right because there's not that much space so maybe I'll change this in the future but I think it's okay for now just to have something okay uh, for this clip here I did actually record audio for that so I'll let that play in a second I know uh, I'm kind of like jumping all over the place we were just doing uh, the creating the chest sprite to get started on the interactables but yeah, I'm kind of like all over the place when I'm doing this. This this part's for, uh, I, I'm just like, I just randomly, you know, I was, I was like, ah, I'll just start cleaning up the scripts now in, instead of doing the interactables. So that's why I switched randomly. We, we, I will still do the interactable script, just, just not <laughs> yet. I think I'm going to keep the audio for this clip. I know all the other clips didn't have audio. Um, so pretty much what I've done just now is I've separated the enemy script that I had on the rat enemy into two separate scripts. And the reason for this is because all the enemies are most likely going to have the same uh, health system and, or not the health system, but like the, they're going to have the same script where they, they take damage the same way because it's always going to be from the player. So I made this enemy mortality script and it's pretty much half of the original enemy script. And what it's doing is it's just uh, got the take damage method and that I enumerator that I made to like do the sprite color flash. And then the other half, the other half of the original enemy script, I've renamed into rat enemy script uh, just because this is going to be only handling the attack method for the rat that I have. Uh, and the nice part about this is uh, I was originally going to do this because I wanted to separate the, the movement method, like the way the rat was following the player, but then I remembered we already got rid of that because we're now using the A-star Pathfinder script. So I don't even have to worry about it, which is nice. 
Yeah, I know, jumping, uh, jumping all over the place again. Still not on the interactables, but now I decided to work on the player mortality. So I've created a canvas, uh, kind of getting into like the Unity UI components now. Uh, pretty simple. I, I, I just want to do heart sprites for now to represent the player health. Uh, nothing too crazy. So, uh, honestly, I can't remember what was happening in this clip because I didn't record any audio for it, but I believe I'm writing the first version of what the player health script would have been. But in the next clip, me from one week ago will tell you that I deleted all of this, so I'm just keeping this in for context for the next clip to make sense. All right, so everything I just showed in that short little previous clip got rid of it. Uh, the hearts were working, it just, for some reason, the way I was doing it, I couldn't get it to link with the player. Uh, so I've gone with this new approach here where I have the same, uh, it's like a health controller script that's running on the uh, UI canvas. And pretty much we're just, uh, I've done something pretty bad where I'm linking the player health directly to the script's health. So that's happening here. I've heard this is not good to do, but I'm doing it anyways. Uh, and then we're just running through this for loop of saying like, if I, I is zero, if I is less than the length of hearts, add one. Uh, and then we're just checking based off of like uh, current health and max health. And yeah, and I think, I think everything in the player script has pretty much reverted back to what it was before I started. Um, yeah, so if we go into the uh, Unity here, it should work. So it set us to three, because three is our default. I'm just gonna run away for a second here, okay. I'm gonna take a bullet, boom, we lost one heart. We got hit once. It's once more and it destroys our player object, which is fine for now because I don't have a death animation yet, so it's all good. Okay, so inside of the player movement script right now, uh, right now currently with how this is working, uh, the... how do I explain this? When an enemy projectile hits a player, uh, it triggers this method inside of the player movement script that causes the player to take damage uh, relative to like whatever the enemy damage integer is. But I also need a way for that to happen when it's not a projectile. Maybe the player just runs into the uh, enemy rigid body. And right now I have that inside of here, but I think I think I'm just, I, I, right now I just have it taking like a solid one damage per hit, like it's not uh, related to like any variable anywhere, so just checking to see if that works right now. Uh, I saved this already, but anyway, um, I was testing it out, it wasn't working, it's because I had the wrong uh, layer mask in there. I'm using get layer mask to uh, get this to work because it's an on collision and not an on trigger, uh, so hopefully this works. Uh, so I'm just going to hit play in here and then I'm gonna to go to the player I'm gonna look at our health we got three health I'm gonna to touch them and I lost a health so it's working all right so our enemy sprites in here already had a uh, visual damage indicator when the player shot an enemy their sprite would blink red for a specified amount of time but the player character did not have anything like that. So I wanted to implement something, but it wouldn't be exactly the same as the enemy notification. So what I've done in here, let me just scroll to the top real quick. I think I got to split this script apart because this is the player movement script and I got stuff in here that is not player movement. So I'll probably split it up soon. Um, so I've added in these variables here, sprite render for the sprite render. Uh, I got the two uh, sprite color changes that I want. One is uh, just the default, I got, or I guess this is the default, and this one is uh, in the enemy sprite, it's a red color, but for this one, I think since it's the player, 
we want it to not be red, so I made it just white, but with the opacity set to zero. And then I also set a, a delay uh, float here for that too. So down here near the bottom in the take enemy damage method that I already had set up, I added this coroutine here just before the player health takes the enemy damage. Uh, and that goes down here into this IE numerator and pretty much it's just uh, causing the player sprite to blink. Uh, I think that I've got this blinking, so it's 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 blinking damage back to normal, damage back to normal, damage back to normal. I was doing that three times because I wanted it to sort of. I originally in the script we have this. Uh, last damage taken equals time dot time, and that's pretty much saying like. Uh, while the player is in recovery time, don't take any damage. And right now I have that set to, uh, it's like about two seconds. Um, so if we go in here into the game, uh, I wanted the sprite to essentially blink during that amount of time. So I'll take some damage here. And as you can see, the player sprite starts blinking a lot. And now that it's blinked, I can take damage again. But you'll notice I'm pressing right up against them. The player sprite's not blinking because I'm not taking damage, even though I am colliding with the enemy. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I got that working, and I think the blinking is noticeable enough that the player's like, oh, I got hit. Or not the player, but like the person playing the player. Also, you know, eventually there will be like an audio cue, most likely. Uh, right now there's like completely no audio in this game, so I think that'll add a lot, hopefully. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's that. Uh, yeah, I'll probably uh, split apart, apart the script pretty soon, because it's getting kind of messy, and I'm a little concerned about it. But on the bright side, I am getting better at recording these parts directly after I code something the first couple weeks of me working on this and I haven't really been working on this constantly it's been like a maybe once every couple days sort of thing I was not recording anything at all so the first half of this video I'm predicting is going to be super fucked just saying yeah all right so in my latest update we have let me just go to the game first uh, I'll click play just to show you what's happening we got this uh, little chest in the middle of the room. I've turned off all the enemies for now just to make it uh, less annoying. Also, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a uh, spawn animation on the chest. It's kind of laggy because it's like trying to load the game, but also play the animation at the same time. But that won't matter later on because the chest won't be spawning when the game starts. It'll be spawning when, I don't know, all the enemies are dead or some event happens in the game. Anyway, uh, what I've done here is when the player walks up to the chest, they can press F and it will play the open chest animation. And the way I did this, I actually had to, uh, I tried to do it myself, not gonna lie, I couldn't get it to work. I had to, I followed this guy, BMO, his video to get this interaction to work. I, Pretty much the, the short of it is I put this interaction listener prefab on the chest prefab. It has a is in range bool uh, interact key and an interaction uh, interact action uh, list here for other interactions, but I only have one in this case. And with this, I have two scripts. Uh, one is the chest controller script which pretty much just takes the an is open bool and an animator um, and a, where is it in here? And a interaction, what did I call this? I just called it interactable. Uh, I'll just show you the scripts really quick. I mean, there's not too much in them. Here's the chess controller script. It's just got the animator variable. It's got the bool variable, pretty much just a method uh, setting the bool to true and changing the animator to the is open state. Uh, the interactor script, there's a, a little bit more in here. There's a is in range bool to check if the player is in range. Uh, the interact key, I've never used key code 
before the key code variable type, so this was brand new to me. Same with the unity event uh, variable, which was that list of uh, events that you could put in. Uh, pretty much it's just pulling this open chest as an event, which is something I would have never figured out, uh, just bumbling around in Unity. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's just an update method, checking to see if it's in range, and the in range triggers on the event trigger. So if the player uh, crosses over the the trigger on the chest, in range checks to true, and then you can press the key. Uh, the only issue right now with this is if I was a player who didn't know anything, I, obviously I know because I made it, uh, if I was a player that didn't know anything, I, right now there's no way to know how to open the chest so i need the next step in my mind is i need some sort of dialogue to pop up at the same time as the in range trigger happens and that dialogue needs to say the input key to open the chest i think i think that's what i that's what i'm going to work on next all right um i'm not even sure if uh, since the last time I talked, it's the same day since the last clip, but it's been probably just four hours of me ramming my head against a wall trying to get this pop-up text to work. Uh, it's finally working. Uh, pretty much, okay, so I have this tooltip manager script here uh, where we have a, a singleton method here just on the wake, making sure it's like one tooltip at a time popping up uh, and then we're saying like the tooltip's not there the game object's gone at the start uh, and then we're okay I can get delete this actually um, this was when I was trying to position the tooltip I can just get rid of that uh, and then yeah we just have some two methods here one's for hiding and one's for showing the tooltip um, I took this from I based this off of BMO's video again because I was using this script from the other part too and I just kind of like meshed these two things together and just forced it to work. So inside of the interactable script that I talked about in the previous clip, uh, we have the on trigger enter and the on trigger on trigger enter and on trigger exit. Uh, and inside of here there's two new lines that got added. It's the uh, showing the tooltip manager instance message there and the hiding of the tooltip manager here. And then on top of that, inside of the update, we have the tooltip manager inheriting the transform position of whatever the, uh, you know the game object is and in this case it's the chest it, it, so it, it, because the chest has the uh, interactable script on it and then also I added in a bool here just to check if the chest has already been interacted with because if it has in that case we don't want the message to pop up anymore like if the chest says uh, press F to open the chest and the chest is already open uh, you can't open it again, right? Uh, so yeah, I finally got this working. Honestly, I got it. this BMO guy is saving my life right now. Uh, but I'll, I'll run the script just to show you what's going on. Uh, just for like the last couple of minutes, I've been playing around with the text box, trying to get that to look at least somewhat acceptable. Uh, I should make this uh, full screen maybe actually just so you can actually read it. So I don't, I don't have the text scaling right now. Uh, okay, so here's my guy, my little cat guy. Walk up to the chest, we got this press F to open tooltip. You press F, the text disappears. You know, you come back, you keep hitting the trigger. It's all good. Everything's working. I can finally go to sleep. It's. It's 1 a.m. I have work tomorrow. Let's go. 
Alright, it is now multiple days later and I'm editing the video, but here's me making a wizard sprite in the background. Uh, that's all I got for this devlog, thanks for watching. I'll be sure to have more progress to show soon, I know this video was a little bit all over the place, but I'll try to improve on recording my progress, uh, that way you guys can see more of the process in the next video. Uh, so I'll see you in the next one, bye.